I tell you this. The time has come for you to look at things a new way. This is the moment of your rebirth as an individual, as a society. You must recreate your world now before you destroy it with your insanities. Now listen to me. We are all one. There is only one of us. You are not separate from me and you are not separate from each other. Everything we are doing, we are doing in concert with each other. Our reality is a co-created reality. Your will is my will. No individual aspect of divinity has power over any other aspect of divinity. It is not possible for one soul to affect another against its will. There are no victims and there are no villains. You cannot understand this from your limited perspective, but I am telling you it is so. There is only one reason to be, do, or have anything as a direct statement of who you are. Since all of us are co-creating, it may serve us to do what we can to show others the way that some parts of us wish to go. You can be a shower of the way by demonstrating the life that you'd like to create and inviting others to follow your example. You might even say, I am the life and the way. Follow me. But be careful. Some people have been crucified for making such a statement. In highly evolved cultures, all sentient beings are clear that there is no separation between themselves and what you would call God. They are also clear that there is no separation between themselves and others. They know that they are each having an individual experience of the whole. The question of what you are trying to do then becomes a question of prime importance. Not just in your life in general, but in every moment of your life, specifically, because it is the moments of life that a life is created. And understand this, no matter how inconsequential, there is a consequence to everything. And the consequence is who and what you are. You are in the act of defining yourself right now. Every act is an act of self-definition. Everything you think, say, and do declares, this is who I am. I want to tell you, my dearest children, that this matter of who you are and who you choose to be is of great importance. Not only because it sets the tone of your experience, but because it creates the nature of mine. All of your life you have been told that God created you. I come now to tell you this. You are creating God. This is holy work we are up to, you and I. This is sacred ground we walk. This is the path. In every moment, God expresses himself in, as, and through you. You are always at choice as to how God will be created now. And she will never take that choice from you. You are not without guidance in these matters, nor will you ever be. It is built into you as an internal guidance system that shows you the way home. This is the voice that speaks to you always of your highest choice, that places before you your grandest vision. All you need do is heed that voice and not abandon the vision. Throughout your history, I have sent you teachers. During every day and time, have my messengers brought you glad tidings of great joy. Holy scriptures have been written, and holy lives have been lived, that you might know of this eternal truth. You and I are one. Now again, I send you scriptures. You are holding one of them in your hands. Now again, I send you messengers seeking to bring you the word of God. Will you listen to these words? Will you hear these messengers? Will you become one of them? That is the great question. That is the grand invitation. That is the glorious decision. The world awaits your announcement. 
and you make that announcement with your life lived. The human race has no chance to lift itself from its own lowest thoughts until you lift yourself to your own highest ideas. Those ideas expressed through you as you create the template, set the stage, serves as a model for the next level of human experience. You are the life and the way the world will follow you. You are not a choice in this matter. It is the only matter in which you have no free choice. It is simply the way it is. Your world will follow your idea about yourself. Ever it has been, ever it will be. First comes your thought about yourself. Then follows the outer world of physical manifestation. What you think you create. What you create you become. What you become you express. What you express you experience. What you experience you are. What you are, you think. The circle is complete. The holy work in which you are engaged has really just begun. For now, at last, you understand what you are doing. It is you who have caused yourself to know this. You who have caused yourself to care. And you do care now more than ever before about who you really are. For now, at last, you see the whole picture. Who you are, I am. You are defining God. I have sent you a blessed part of me into physical form that I might know myself experientially as all that I know myself to be conceptually. Life exists as a tool for God to turn concepts into experience. It exists for you to do the same, for you are God doing this. I choose to recreate myself anew in every single moment. I choose to experience the grandest version of the grandest vision ever I had about who I am. I have created you so that you might recreate me. This is our holy work. This is our greatest joy. This is our very reason for being. Because unity is the truth. Separatism is the illusion. As long as a society sees itself as separate, a series of separate units, it lives in that illusion. All of life on your planet is built on separatism, based in duality. Yet this is how a person can be separate from his own truth. By looking truth in the eye so squarely he can't miss it, and then denying what he sees. Denial is the mechanism, and nowhere is denial more insidious than in self-denial. You have spent a lifetime denying who and what you really are. You see goodness and compassion within you, but you deny it. You see wisdom within you, but you deny it. You see infinite possibility within you, yet you deny it. And you see and experience God within you, yet you deny it. You deny that I am within you, that I am you, and in this you deny me, my rightful and obvious place. And I tell you this, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. By your very thoughts will you deny me. By your very words will you deny me. By your very actions will you deny me. You know in your heart that I am with you, in you, that we are one, yet you deny me. You must deny me if you are to continue seeking to become me. And that is what you are wanting to do. Yet you cannot become what you already are. So denial is important. It is a useful tool until it is not anymore. The master knows that denial is for those who are choosing to have the illusion continue. Acceptance is for those who choose now for the illusion to end. Acceptance, proclamation, demonstration. These are the three steps to God. Acceptance of who and what you really are. Proclamation of it for all the world to hear. And demonstration in every way. Self-proclamation is always followed by demonstration. You will demonstrate yourself to be God.
even as you now demonstrate what you think of yourself. Your whole life is a demonstration of that. Yet with this demonstration will come to your greatest challenge. For the moment you stop denying yourself, others will deny you. The moment you proclaim your oneness with God, others will, will proclaim your partnership with Satan. The moment you speak the highest truth, others will say you speak of the lowest blasphemy. And as happens with all masters who gently demonstrate their mastery, you will be both worshipped and reviled, elevated and denigrated, honored and crucified. Because while for you the cycle will be over, those who are still living with the illusion will not know what to make of you. Now that is what is true about you and me. You do not disgust me. You do not disturb me. You do not even disappoint me. You arouse me. I am aroused to new possibilities, to new experiences yet to come. In you, I am awakened to new adventures and to the excitement of movement, to new levels of magnificence. Far from disappointing me, you thrill me. I am thrilled at the wonder of you. You think you are at the pinnacle of human development, and I tell you, you are just beginning. You have just begun to experience your splendor. Your grandest ideas are as yet unexpressed, and your grandest visions are unlived. But wait, look, notice. The days of your blossoming are at hand. The stalk has grown strong, and the petals are soon to be open. And I tell you this, the beauty and the fragrance of your flowering shall fill the land, and you shall yet have your place in the garden of the gods.